Here, the speaker is imagining their death and um, what will be found when they die. Um, and let's see what we can come up with. Whoever comes to shroud me, cover me when I'm done. Do not harm. No, oh, it's, it's almost instructions on his death. That subtle wreath of hair which crowns my arm. The mystery, the sign you must not touch. For tis my outward soul. What a wonderful image. That subtle wreath of hair which crowns my arm. Okay, so wreath of hair. So there's a kind of circle of hair. And it crowns. It rule, it's a symbol of ruling. So he's got this hair wreath around his hand, almost like a ring. The mystery, the sign, you must not touch, for tis my outward soul. Viceroy to that, which unto heaven being gone, will leave this to control, and keep these limbs, her provinces, from dissolution. Okay, so I think this is his dead lover's hair, which rules from heaven, rules from heaven, and now the language is one of government, her provinces, so they don't dissolve. So don't touch this, 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 this wreath, it's a crown, um, and, and it's a way of her to control these limbs, which are her provinces, and please don't disturb it. For if the sinewy thread my brain lets fall through every part, can tie those parts and make me one of all. Those hairs which upward grew and strength and art have from a better brain can better do it. Whew. If the sinewy thread my brain lets fall, so that must be the hair from his head, and they tie everything together, make me one and all of all. The hair that upward grew and strength and art have from a better brain, can better do it. Ah, okay, so, so, so actually this, this hair wreath better controls me than my brain, my mind. I think that's what's being said. Except she meant that I, sh that I by this should know my pain as prisoners then are manacled when they are condemned to die. Okay, so now it's not a crown, it's um, chains. So hair is crown, hair is chains. What air she meant by it, bury it by me. For since I am love's martyr, Look, whether she meant to rule me or control me, it doesn't matter. Whatever she meant by it, um, bury it with me. I'm love's martyr, for since I'm lo it might... So since I died for love, this, this, this symbol might breed idolatry, meaning people, it, like a relic. So Catholics worshipped objects of saints, which they called relics. And for the modern uh, Christian, the Protestant Christian, that's idolatry, worshipping of, of things instead of God. And so he's worried that this hair, this, this symbol, it, people would use it as a relic. If unto others' hands these relics came, as t'was humility to afford it, Afford to it all that a soul can do. As t'was humility to afford to it all that a soul can do. So for him, he didn't. He wasn't idolatrous of it. He was being humble. He was humble. Humbled by this. As a symbol of... of of a soul, and that's not what other people will do. They'll just use it as something to worship. 
to afford to it all this. So, tis some bravery that since you would have none of me, I bury some of you. Ah, so this is a spurned, spurned lover. So he's saying, this is another one of those, oh, I'm, I'm going to die poems. So, so he's been rejected, and he had this, he had this hair wreath or some symbol from her and it, it showed that she ruled over him. It showed that she controlled him. Um, and But nonetheless, he loves her all the way to the end. And even though she'll have nothing to do with him, he'll, he will bury her with him. Wow, that's hard. Again, yet another example of a really complex conceit. What I noticed in reading this poem is that... Uh, Dunn keeps shifting the ground on what, what a symbol means or what it signifies. So that shifting forces the reader to read really closely to follow the argument, to follow the conceit. Um, it's a surprise ending, uh, but once we know the convention of what it means to be rejected by your lover and how you react, it, it seems to fit into a pattern.